It's time for Sam Raimi's Spider-Man Trilogy Movie Reviews! Starting with Spider-Man, of course. How did nobody at Peter's school realize that he's Spider-Man after they literally saw him dragging around a tray by a web? So you're telling me nobody recognized Peter's literal voice when he was in the suit? After knowing him for years and years? Yet there are people who are able to tell who's coming up the stairs by the sound of their footsteps? Something ain't right. You're acting so strangely, Peter. Okay, thanks. Why does Willem Dafoe need to wear that giant green goblin mask when it's identical to his normal facial expression? Willem Dafoe is just green goblin in real life. He seems like such a pesky little guy. Which extremely gruesome weapon in a goofy Marvel movie is more powerful? Green Goblin's instant skeleton pumpkin bombs, or that villain from Ant-Man's stolen shrinking tech that turns the one dude into a bloody blob? Superhero movies are too cowardly to have horny upside-down kissing scenes and bombs that turn innocent civilians into skeletons these days. Go, Web! Fly! Up, up, and away, Web! Shazam! Go! Go! Go, Web, go! can't believe they didn't censor Tony McGuire's wrist buttholes. Spider-Man should call people gay again, like the good old days. So what if his husband made it for him, Spider-Man? Personally, I think Tom Holland's Spider-Man is lacking in the subtle homophobia department. My arch nemesis frames Jenko, sees Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst holding hands in the hospital room after Tobey's Spidey Boy Maguire's elderly Aunt May just got blown up in an explosion and goes home to tell his clearly psychotic dad, who he just caught maniacally laughing all by himself because he thought he was home alone, that he caught MJ cheating on him. Man and woman must never touch whilst the woman is owned by another man. Tsk tsk, Spider Boy. You should know better. It's a jungle out there. I had to beat an old lady with a stick to get these crams. <laughs> I honestly think it was a fair trade of Uncle Ben's life for the awesome. I missed the part where that's my problem. Come back. Seriously, great stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if this movie is one of the main factors I'm so terrified of spiders. I loved Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man film so much as a kid, but the part where Peter Parker gets bit by a radioactive spider traumatized me. To this day, there's a part of me that still thinks all spiders are the ruthless jerks like the one that bites Peter. Oh yeah, here's this poor dude trying to get it on with his one true love. Let me bite the freaking crap out of him so he'll never be able to have her the way he wants. Cause now he's got crazy spider-like superpowers to deal with, and he'll never get to lead a normal life from here on. Screw you, human. I'm sure that's exactly what that dickhead spider was thinking as he scurried away on the ground. I'm not bitter, though. Guys, I know this movie has been around as long as me, but has anyone made a Peter Parkour joke yet? Tobey Maguire and I have two things in common. We both are ugly criers and love Kirsten Dunst. Could MJ stop screaming, please? Girl, you're only hanging from a bridge. How does Spider-Man take the photos of himself swinging? Like, I'm imagining him sticking his camera on a timer, swinging, and then coming back to check the pic. I trust my barber. Mr. J.K. Simmons, how the heck do you trust your barber when your hair looks like that? The Nickelback song is just the icing on the cake. Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man didn't call anyone gay in this one. Kiki's delivery service for men. Watching this at 12. Go, Spidey, go! Watching this at 29. Maintaining a healthy work-life balance is incredibly important. Nothing better than watching this on New Year's Eve and then hearing Peter say, Pizza time. As soon as midnight hits. Peter in literally every Spider-Man film. I can't be with Mary Jane or tell anyone I'm Spider-Man because otherwise they'll be in danger. Mary Jane gets captured and nearly dies in every movie anyway. So basically what I've gathered from these films is that all scientists are evil. Never has there been, nor ever will there be, a more disarming and intimidating presence than a confidently topless Alfred Molina. Alfred Molina put his whole octessie into this. Aunt May whacking Doc Ock in the back of the head with her cane was more effective female empowerment than anything in Captain Marvel. I had a Spider-Man themed birthday party when I was six or seven, around which time I also told my best friend that the nightlight in my bedroom was not, in fact, a nightlight, but a device which allowed me to have phone calls with Spider-Man. I don't think he bought it. Why is Kirsten Dunst always inexplicably damp? 
I don't even blame MJ. I would leave the person I'm about to marry on our wedding day for Peter Parker too. Imagine being a model slash astronaut slash humanitarian and losing your fiancé to Spider-Man. And this guy's wondering why he has so many enemies. Petition for all the funny faces Tobey Maguire makes in the three Spider-Man movies to be cut out and turned into their own short film. Signatures go at the bottom. Tobey Maguire has the most vacant eyes. He has the expressive range of a crash test dummy. That boy is hollowed out. His Peter Parker feels like a robot learning to experience the depths of human emotion. When he starts mechanically reciting poetry to Mary Jane on the street because a psychopath told him to and she's like, what the frick are you doing? Stop doing that. That's perfection. I cherish this bizarre movie. I love how Peter keeps reciting poetry to MJ. Like, he's really continuing to take dating advice from the guy currently living under a pier with four metal arms welded to his back. Many things to love about this movie, but my love for the Spider-Man TV theme song homage by the violin performer lady is ridiculous. Catch me showing it to my family and friends at any occasion and inevitably annoying them to death. Peter's having his Hannah Montana Crowley Corners entire audience swearing their secrecy moment. Psst, watch my Hannah Montana movie reviews video to get the reference. P.S. Give Aunt May her free toaster. Spider-Man 3. I once saw a TikTok video talking about how this film is actually a spoken word musical about the dangers of toxic masculinity and honestly, my life was forever changed. Anyone else feel like Sam Raimi really wants to make a musical? Emo Peter performing in the jazz restaurant is peak cinema. They got Peter Parker looking like a member of Panic at the Disco circa 2005. The most quotable Spidey movie. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. Bangs really change a person. The cool Peter Parker scene, you know which one I'm talking about, is a 100% accurate representation of my brain 24 hours a day. Also, Kirsten Dunst, natural blonde, hair dyed red for Spider-Man. Bryce Dallas Howard, natural redhead, hair dyed blonde for Spider-Man. Elizabeth Banks, natural blonde, hair dyed brown for Spider-Man. Emma Stone, natural redhead, hair dyed blonde for Spider-Man. Not sure what this could possibly actually mean or what we'll do with this information, but I get the feeling it's a conspiracy that goes all the way to the top. The film suffers from having too many villains and from making Peter Parker an absolute idiot. He kisses Gwen Stacy in front of MJ and then tries to propose to MJ the next time he sees her. Surely New York's savior isn't that stupid. Kirsten Dunst probably has a PhD on screaming after all the shouting she had to do as MJ. Why is Mary Jane always getting kidnapped? Girl, get a gun or something. Team Ursula. Ursula is greater than Mary Jane. Ursula is greater than Gwen Stacy. How are you not gonna go for the sweetest, most innocent girl in all of film who bakes you cookies and cakes and looks at you the way Ariana Grande looks at weird Pete Davidson in that one meme? Harry Osborne certainly knows a thing or two about interior decorating. No home is complete without a gigantic, ornate portrait of Willem Dafoe on the living room wall. Eddie Brock literally started the hater movement by going to church for the sole purpose of praying for Peter Parker's downfall. So funny how when Peter has the symbiote, he just gets a black suit, but Eddie just turns into a velociraptor. I just can't get over that this continuity has Peter shoot stuff from his wrists. We don't talk about this enough. He literally shoots hyper-strong webbing out of his wristwatch area. How does it come out? Does it hurt like Logan's claws? Where is it stored? How does his body hold the extra volume? Does it taste different depending on what he's eaten? Does it sting if it gets in his eye? Sandman. More like sad man, am I right? Thanks for whoever suggested the Spider-Man trilogy, and thank you to everyone else for watching. I'll see you next time. Like a spider